So I call Deputy Lucinda Creighton, six and a half minutes each. Sir. Yep. Thank you, Lars Kian Corla. Um, I'd like to start by saying that at long last, um, workers who have sacrificed so much in this country over the last number of years should have um, slightly more money in their pockets at the end of the week. And that is a step in the right direction. And I, for one, am happy to welcome it. Um, however, what is completely absent in this budget is any sort of new vision um, for the sustainable economic growth of this country. In fact, the economic plan for Ireland uh, appears to be to simply mimic precisely the formula that we, was used by Fianna Fáil in the early 2000s, and I really consider that to be very regrettable. The plan is to boost revenue for developers and push up property prices, to ignore the domestic economy, and um, hope that we continue to attract inward investment um, in the face of, uh, obviously, huge scrutiny of our, um, of our tax arrangements. Minister Noonan spoke um, of Robert Frost's road less travelled, um, but he has actually chosen to follow the, the beaten path, um, and that is regrettable. Last week, the Irish Independent announced that it was to be the builder's budget, but what we have in fact seen is nothing more than a dig out for developers. The abolition of the 80% windfall tax on rezoning is the result of months of lobbying by the Construction Industry Federation, the same powerful lobbies that we have seen in the past uh, having immense and enormous impact uh, on government policy in the days of Fianna Fáil. And we've also become aware of the, the attendance of the Taoiseach at private dinners for bankers and developers not too far from this house. The original purpose of this tax was to prevent what happened in the boom times when councillors were being lobbied to rezone agricultural land to commercial, to residential, um, or, or indeed to rezone residential land to commercial. The land would then be flipped over for huge profits um, once the rezoning occurred, and in, in, and in essence, councillors' votes could make millionaires of landowners overnight. And it seems that the government is now happy to ramp up that sort of behaviour again without any spatial strategy, any national development plan, or any plan at all, frankly. We need the development of houses, there's no question about that, but not in a haphazard, frenzied fashion, where once again developers and bankers are circling the wagons and putting politicians under pressure. It's no surprise that both NAMA and the banks favour a return to mass rezoning, as it could, of course, generate huge returns for, for both of them. Similarly, in many cases, it would result in a large bailout for, for some of the very developers who contributed, um, in fact, led the dysfunction that, that exists in the market today. Until th those dysfunctions um, are resolved and until, until clear spatial strategies are put in place for this country, returning to the bad old days of windfall profits in rezoning will be a recipe for economic disaster. And it is extraordinary that there has been so little focus on this in the media in the last 24 hours. Today, the government is laying the foundations for another boom-bust cycle for the future. And this is precisely the type of economic vicious circle which the Independent Fiscal Advisory Council is trying to protect us from. Um, obviously, that advice has fallen on deaf ears. The budget is also anti-business and it's anti-self-employed people. Uh, Michael Noonan, the minister, was on radio yesterday, uh, this morning, ex excuse me, blaming Fianna Fáil um, and a hike in 2010, I think, in PRSI for public sector workers. Um, he was blaming that move for the uh, increase um, and the, dis the, the, the unfair targeting of self-employed people in the rate of um, the universal social charge. Um, I think it's important to note that this government has had the opportunity to address the issue over the last number of years, and there was certainly no onus on the government to increase the USC for self-employed people by 1% yesterday, but that's what, hap what has happened. Um, and it's, uh, I think it's worth noting that the rate of USC now for unemployed people is almost the same rate as um, the headline rate of corporate tax in, in this country. And in fact, it's the same as the effective rate of corporate tax in this country. So we believe it's, 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 um, it's appropriate to tax individual self-employed people uh, on top of the income tax that they pay at a rate of 11%, um, which is the same as the effective rate of corporate tax. I find that quite grotesque, frankly. And, and uh, again, it, has, it, it appears to have been largely ignored. 
It's hard to believe that this government values business people and employers when they are again and again singled out for the harshest treatment by our tax code. It's short-sighted, um, as is, uh, I might add, the failure to address the capital gains tax issue for business investment. We have zero incentives um, that have any real effect in our economy for, um, for wealthy people, for investors, for um, for angel investors, for anybody who wants to find a way to, to, to gain a return on their, on their, um, on their wealth um, to invest it in business. There are many uh, uh, tax incentives available if you want to invest your money in commercial property or residential property. Every sort of uh, loophole is available. But if you want to invest in innovation, in entrepreneurialism, uh, there is virtually nothing available for you. And that, I think, really uh, proves the, pa the, the point that this government does not show any serious commitment to the indigenous sector, to small and medium-sized business. Um, it is more interested, again, in supporting influential banks and big de developers. And that, sadly, is precisely the formula that got us into the mess that we are in in this country. Uh, it is the formula that was uh, followed by Fianna Fáil. It is not the road less travelled. It is precisely the road that was travelled before with disastrous consequences. The Ireland which is emerging from the EU IMF bailout, is basically the same Ireland that was engulfed in the economic crisis six years ago. We have learned very little. We are less well off. Incomes have been decimated. Hundreds of thousands of our young people have been forced to emigrate. But have we actually learned anything? We haven't changed the culture in Ireland. We have not fundamentally changed how we engage with planning, with policy making or with decision making. We have not reformed our politics. We have not developed a new economic or social vision for this country. We are still excessively reliant on far, foreign direct investment. We are still um, uh, uh, excessively reliant on property bubbles and boom-bust cycles. We have not addressed the failings in our political system. And um, it is beginning, unfortunately, Minister, to look a lot more like business as, you, as usual. It is very difficult now to distinguish the path, the vision, if you could call it that, of this government from that of Bertie O'Hearn's Fianna Fáil-led coalitions. Thank, Thank you, you. Deputy. Uh,